What's up, y'all? I'm Jay Wayne. You know, representing Team Take Profits. And I created this video for you guys because I know a lot of you want to compound your account. You want to grow it fast, but your account is $500. You know, uh, maybe some of you guys uh, have $1,000 and want to grow it to $5,000. So, Basically, you have to take out a big lot size. That's all to it. You have to take out a big lot size. Um, you could take out a dollar here, you know, a dollar there, and you'll be forever trying to flip that to a uh, to a thousand. Um, I suggest you guys use risk management. But I already know the game. I already know you guys get impatient. It is what it is. So if you are impatient and you do want to grow it fast. I, somebody got to help you guys and I want to be that guy that give you what you need the information and the knowledge Hope you enjoy guys your account ain't like 10 bands 20,000 you know a couple thousand in account and you want to kind of you know grow it a little bit faster So how do we do that the purpose of this is take out bigger lot sizes? but we got to properly do it because I remember taking out four lot sizes at a time trying to catch 30 pips on all on both all three of those trades and blew my account $1,600 overnight. You know, so because what it does is if you take them standards out and you do it on multiple trades and your account ain't like 10,000, then it's going to take your equity up. Okay. So now, now if it, if it happens to be in the drawdown, the dr it might still go in your favor. But the drawdown alone would just zap your account out. Gotcha. So before you even go into the way that you already did your homework on your markups and it's, it was going for a sale, but it started pulling back for a buy, the pullback would just take your equity up just alone because you risk so much. So when we only got a couple thousand in our account and we trying to grow it, it's still a patience game. It's always going to come back down to a patience game, but you got to scout the standard. That's the mindset. You got to scout the standard. And so um, the pair that I like, and I get the big bang for my buck is the GBP pairs. Because in one candle, even the, even one candle can go 40 pips. Or um, maybe maybe twenty maybe twenty pips realistically. One candle can go about twenty pips. Um, I didn't see them go fifty pips in one candle, but that's news. But one candle can can drop or go go long for like twenty pips in GBP pairs, be, and that's just the way it is during the London session. So the other pairs, it can have the same length candle, but it won't be twenty pips. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I can I can go to the GBP uh, USD and get to find the same candle on a on a US on a all USD, and it looked the same length, but it ain't the, as many pips. And that's the way it is. So I like to do it now. You guys can do it on any in, on any chart that you want to do it on, uh, or any pair. But I personally like the GBP pairs because they're bigger and you get more bang for your buck. So. I'm gonna share my screen. Now, we still we still gotta do our markups. We still we still gotta do, you know, all our analysis. Everything stay the same. All the basic stuff stay the same. You know, so I just happened to pull this boy up. Uh, this is GBP odd, and we already know we stay away from all this little choppy stuff consolidation. But, you know, I like to look on my uh, trading view. I like to have the pivots up because you can't pull the pivots up on uh, the phone. So I got this on my app on my phone. So I switch here to see if we had one of my pivot points. And for an example, I just use this as an example. So let's say, let's say you're looking for a sale because it started dropping from up here and you missed this. Now it's consolidating. Once you saw it hit, hit the pivot point or, or you could have easily just marked up support and resistance, you know, you know, on this stuff, you know, look at that right up in here, right up in here. Now it's coming back to that level right up in here. You see what I'm saying? And you easily could have caught that sale. That's easy stuff. So 
Um, so how would you take this tray right here if you caught this? So you obviously wouldn't take the standard here. This has to be your risk management tray. This is your dollar. This is your $5 uh, tray. Stop loss up here. This is, this is a beautiful trade. That's why, guys, if we can catch these boys at the beginning, but the only way to catch them at the beginning of the move and not, like, in the middle is we got to be plugged in. You know what I'm saying? We got to start setting alerts. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to get more accurate, more professional with this because – because when you caught when this when this sale happened right here, you should have been like, okay, I want to catch it back at the pullback. I want to put a. That's why this is where this is where you start becoming at the next level because now you're doing what Swipe Trades is doing. You setting sale limits. You feel me? Because you like, okay, this boy didn't dropped. I wanted to pull back right where the uh, the resistance was. And so you can set set an alert. Now you ain't gonna put no sell limit in. Hex no. You ain't gonna put no sell limit in because who knows? This thing could go all the way back. We didn't saw swipe trades do that plenty of times. Mm -hmm. So we ain't gonna set no sell limit, but instead of setting a sell limit, in your mind it's a sell limit in your mind. But for real, you only setting an alert. Okay. You know. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you will go over here to alerts if you're using Trading View, and if you're using MetaTrader, then just set it on there. But this alert, the reason why I like using this, the GBP, I mean, not the GBP, I'm sorry, um, Trading View, even on my app, is because I can still set alerts on my app because I don't have MetaTrader for them. I don't bring a laptop everywhere I go. Okay. You know, so you can set the alert right here. Boom. Click here to create a new alert. Set that boy up. Put it at the pin. I don't, I don't know. Let me hit create. Did it, did it create one right here? It created it right here. And just move it here. No. Boom. Save. So now it's right here. I can, I can take off that little support line. And now I got my alert. So as soon as price get up here, it alert me. And I have it. I label it called look for sale. You know what I'm saying? Look for sale or something. And once I get alerted, now I'm looking. Eyes on. So that means, you know, that's that's just a way, a good way to stay plugged in and not miss stuff without having to hawk it all day, you know, looking at the chart. So, uh, boom, it hit. And then now you put your, your $5 lot size in or your 50 cent or your dollar right here, you know, according to what your account size is. Now, how do we take the standard? Where do At what point do we take the standard? Well... Now that we know that everything is lining up, this pullback is on the pivot and it's dropping with an engulfing candle, I got my, look at that, let's zoom in. I got my little uh, blue line crossing below my pink line for my 30 minute crossover, you know? And that crossover is valid on a four hour. That crossover is valid on a 15 and the uh, hour, whatever you wanna do, those crossovers, uh, happen. I just like to do it on the 30 and the 15, but you know, so it crossed over. So not, now I got, you know, all my confirmations, right? So we got to wait for a pullback to catch the, the standard. If you want to do it safe. Now you could do it here, but this is the more aggressive way. You know, if you, if you see that this boy is engulfing, you got to catch the standard early. You got to catch it early. You can't be catching it down here. You got to catch, if you're going to do it on this one and be aggressive and you want to get it, then you got to catch it like right here while still dropping. Now it's going to fluctuate, fluctuate and everything, but that's why I don't like to do it. So I want to make sure that I'm in a good sale. So I, I let this candle go on my regular uh, uh, $5 lot size. Now this candle going to come back. I'm going to wait for a pullback. I'm going to wait for a, re not a, not a real deep pullback, but a retest. So this candle came, and all this candle did is retest. What, what did it really retest, though? Just this little bit, look. It retests back to its own that this candle engulfed. This little green candle re came back and retested this what, what, what just got engulfed. Mm. Now, once I see 
that this next candle is going to drop. So I'm waiting for the next candle. Once I see that boy drop, as soon as I see that red showing nice, I'm going to take the standard out. I'm going to go ahead and take the standard and I'm going to catch this probably this whole candle. I'm not trying to catch all of this. If See, so when I take a $50 lot size, you see $1,000. You see, because that's because I'm on GBP USD and I'm taking a $50 lot size. You see what I'm saying? But if you look at the pip count on my on my charts, and when you look at when I be screenshotting, if you look at the pip count, it's only about one candle. It ain't like no 20 pips. True. I've been seeing that lately. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, because I'm just scalping because I ain't really gotten I ain't really got no business doing that. Mm -hmm. But I became comfortable and knowledgeable on how to do it, and you just gotta scalp it safely. Yeah. So I've been in caught this. And, and when we scalp it, like, I wouldn't start right at the beginning because I wanted to see some red, but I probably would have caught it here and probably would have caught 12, 12 pips. You see how that one candle is a nice 12? Easy 12. Mm -hmm. Easy. And on a standard, you already know, that's your quick $120, whatever, $130, whatever it is on a standard. So you caught an easy but you still, you still got your other trade going on. Your, your other trade, your risk management trade, still going, and that boy gonna catch this. Mm. And then you just scalp it. So then, once you scalp this and you're done, you see that pullback happening. You get out because you don't want to ride the wave on your standard. Because at any given time, bro, these candles can just go the other way. Mm. And so oh. you don't want to be you. Now you, it can go the other way on your five dollar. That's nothing. That's just a couple dollars. Mm -hmm. or your dollar a uh, lot size, but you don't want it to go the other way on your standard. You're right, you're right. You'll go three, four hundred deep quick. Right. You'd be like, oh, man, I got to take this L. And then when you keep doing that, it's going to become choppy, and now you're going to see a whole bunch of reds. Mm -hmm. Now you got $300 loss, $200, $150 loss. Now your mental is getting off. Now what's going to happen is now, you go, now you're going to feel like you got to take a break from trading for the rest of the day or maybe for two days. And you're missing out on movements. Had you been in the right mindset, you would have caught them. So we just got to do it right from the beginning. And uh, only scalp. The whole purpose of this is just scalping, how to scalp the, uh, st the bigger lot sizes the right way. And that's how you do it. You wait for that pullback, and then you catch it on the drop. And you have to be sure. And if you're not sure, don't, obviously don't take it if you're not sure. If you're not comfortable with possibly, possibly losing this, then obviously don't take it. But if you if you see it safe safely happening and it's right in front of your eyes and everything is lining up, you gotta you just gotta take it. You just gotta take it with confidence. Guys, uh if you liking this video, if you finding a lot of value, um if you can see yourself using this safely and I'm explaining it well enough, please like this video uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed hit the notification bell so you can get notified of these uh, awesome videos that I'm trying to put out for you guys consistently um, I want to help you along on your trading career um, I just want to help you guys become six-figure traders and uh, and you know I will probably demo first you know if you feel comfortable, because you already be taking lot set big lot sizes. So you probably mm -hmm. already know the feeling and getting used to seeing them big numbers and all that stuff. So you could probably just go ahead and do it. Yeah, I got a little comfortable, man. Um, of course, you know, I started off, you know, like I was selling a watchman, man. Um, um, when me and you set up my account, we started off with a thousand. <laughs> um, and I tripled that. And once I that was still skeptical. Once I tripled that, I went back into my investment account through my company and threw five thousand more dollars in, and I started just trading right off of that, man. So, yeah. So you, so are you taking uh, standards on like every trade and trying to ride the whole trade? I standard? no, actually, I've been um, what I've been doing is using Bollinger's, man. Um, just surfing away. Um, only because with the Bollinger's, of course, we understand that once it comes out of a squeeze, it can only go one direction. So I wait for the crossover. Once I see that crossover hit, that's when I know, okay, bam, I'm looking at a buy or a sell. So that's how I've been hitting them um, the way I have been, bro, honestly. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, yeah, so just, you know, be, have you been in a deep drawdown yet, though? 
No. No? Not, not that much. Not that much. Um, not that much. Um, I think beginning on, earlier on, yeah, I did, man. Yeah, I went into some crazy negatives, so. <laughs> yeah, them yeah, boys like, oh, my God. Yeah. But, yeah, so um, be careful, bro. Just be okay. careful. Cause them, um, <clears throat> cause what can happen is not not one. If you got that much in your account, then not not one standard hit a stop loss ain't gonna wipe you out. But what mm -hmm. it is gonna do is mess with you mentally, yeah, mess with you emotionally, and then that from that it can start getting choppy in your account. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I was reading, man, not too long ago. Um, that um, you should think with your head, not with your emotions. Earlier on coming in, I was thinking with my emotions, man. Just like you said, you said that too. Thinking with your emotions, man, it caused you to just jump out even when it's like 300 and negative. So I just started sitting back and letting you ride out um, just until I was in the safe zone. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if you, um, so really to really avoid, it's, it's almost impossible to avoid, to avoid drawdown. Okay. But if if the best way to, to uh, avoid drawdown and it takes a little more patience, All right. but you just gotta wait for that 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 retest. That retest. Not every this is this look perfect right here, but not all of them gonna be perfect because you can probably get in. You could probably get in on this sale right here, thinking that this is a sale or something. We probably wouldn't think that this is a sale though. But you can you can get in. Let's say you can get in on this sale. Now we got an engulfing. Okay, people be getting in on sales down here, right? Yeah. But then the next candle can go way up here, and then sure. it can drop off. Sure. So now because you got in on a sale here, that you see what I'm saying? Now yeah. now I pull back on you. Now you negative, and these are GBP. So you would be negative probably what thirty pips. Yeah. So you negative three four hundred dollars before it go in your favor. So that's why. If you don't, if you don't catch this boy up here, because really you should have caught it up here because that's where the crossover happened. Mm -hmm. So if you down here, this is a retail move. This is a retail trader move. And by the way, the banks catch them from up here. That's why the crossover strategy. I jump on a fifteen and see did it cross over because the thirty minute is probably down here. The fifteen minute is up here. So you can catch you can catch that that sale that drop even if it's just a small drop you can catch it qu quicker on a fifteen minute and just uh, ride it out on a thirty. But once once the crossover happened on a thirty, we we pretty much good. Okay. For about fifteen twenty pips. But you can get your entry a little bit better on a fifteen. You know if you do, if you just if you're doing a crossover if you let's say we on this on this tray right here you woke up. 3 a.m., 4 a.m., you missed this little crossover. Now we got this engulfing. Almost after every engulfing is a pullback mm -hmm. of some sort, a retest or something after an engulfing. Uh, not all the time, but most of the time it is. So if you catch this big, if you see this big drop happen, don't chase it. Unless, unless you take a, a dollar or a $5 lot size then you can get in here because the pullback ain't gonna hurt you as much. Which you, which you got five thousand dollars in your account and you negative thirty dollars. Who cares? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um, so, but if you're trying to scalp this boy with a bigger twenty fifty dollar lot size, don't get in here. Okay. Please don't nice. get in here. The I stood it earlier on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Cause what it is? Think of it like this. This, bro. I used to do that every time, and bro, I was doing it at work too. Wow. I was not thinking right. Good. So look, I was, bro, I was just killing myself. Bro, I said, I'm done trading for like the whole two weeks. Like, I was just that bad. Look, this was my problem. And this is how you got it. Once, once Curtis helped me to understand it this way, now I think differently. When you, when you want to get in on a buy or sell, you got to get in at a good price point. Boom. Hmm. Boom. Boom. Do that make sense, bro? When you put it yeah. like that. I was like, oh, okay, okay. You got to get in at a great price point. Well, if you're getting in on a sale, how is this a great price point? You're pretty much at the bottom of this consolidation. And when it comes down here, what do we do? Go back up. Yeah, true. Bouncing back and forth. So how is this a good price point? For a sale, it would be probably a good price point for a buy. 
Mm-hmm. But not a sale. This, the sale price point was up here, and we don't know what it's doing up here, so we would, that's why I created the crossover. True. So then my, for me, and that ain't, that's, that ain't even as far. From the crossover to that, that ain't that bad. So, boom. Now, this is a good price point. Now, this is consolidation, bro, and this is how we got to trade come uh, holiday season, uh, November, December, you know, October time. We got we to gotta only be looking at, like, this is all that happens. Mm. Down here to up here, that's all that happens for, like, weeks at a time. Not no, not no crazy big drops. Hey, bro, speaking of holiday, um, like Monday, the market pretty much going to be slower. How, yeah. How it's going to look. Yeah, because what with the holidays, it's like what what pair is in that holiday? That's what you got to look at. Mm. You know, like you know, novice people ain't thinking like that. We got to start thinking like, okay, so this is uh, Memorial's Day. Do 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 London celebrate Memorial's Day? You see what I'm saying? You got to think. You got to look into that. Right, right. And if they do, then don't trade it. Don't trade that pair. Now Australia, you might could trade an all pair. Uh, a euro pair or something. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So you got to, you got to look into that, but okay. I don't even be trading hard on Monday anyway. I really only trade Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I'd be getting like two trades a piece on those days. I, I have my regular lot size and I have my standard bro. I'm piled up on those three days. I'm good. Uh, Monday, if the trade is really good, I take it. I definitely be taking the risk management trade. Okay. On a Monday. Sundays, I ain't messing with it. And Fridays, if it ain't a perfect setup by 3 a.m., I'm not finna be getting into a trade 9, 10 o'clock in the morning on a Friday because market go close and I ain't trying to get stuck into no trade. Now, gotcha. now if I'm trying to scalp something, I see that boy dropping nice on a Friday 9 o'clock and it's perfectly set up, then I scalp it, but I'm not finna try to catch no 30, 40, 50 pips on a on a, on a on a sun on a Friday or a Sunday. Mm. Yeah. So so let's say let's say um this boy dropped right here and you wanna you wanna scalp it. You like okay we might be in a sale now. The only way you can do that is if price does this. And it might come back up here and then once you see it turn back down like in red for the sale then then you get you take the you take the the, the standard lot size, you know your your ten dollar pip, twenty dollar pip, whatever. You take it here and, and probably ride it until you see that boy closing, wicking out. If it if it pull back on, because sometimes they can go deep. And it, this is what I noticed, y'all. When these candles go uh, sometimes like really long, they wick out on you and come back mm -hmm. to the real position that it wants to do. Mm -hmm. So if it's Cause not all now this one this one closed it long. This was pretty good, but a lot of times they do this. They be they look long, start out, get all the way here, and then wick all the way back to his real position. So if it just so happened you catch one of these, if that boy start wicking out like this much, get out the trade, close it, close it with your profit, your hundred dollars, your two hundred, whatever you whatever it is, okay. close it out because this is the mindset. We're not trying to catch. 50, 30 pips on this standard right now. We got to build our account up to at least 10 grand to be doing that. So all we want is a piece. All we want is a piece, bro, of that standard, uh, uh, of that candle on a standard. That's all we want is a piece. Okay, we ain't trying to get greedy or anything like that. We just trying to compound our account a little bit faster. That's the whole purpose of taking out that standard and scalping. So... Uh, if it closes, now here's the thing. If it closes and you're really good at this, and then, and let's say you got in on that boy and it cl and it closes long, I mean short. Well, I can't move this. So I can't move that, huh? So let's say it closes long, it pulls back a little bit, but then it keep dropping. Keep your standard rolling. You know, keep keep the standard in. If it if it's just, but you got to be very cautious though. So you know what I'm saying. If it if it dropped this long, it pulled back on you. You got in on a standard. Boom. Now the next candle. 
The next candle kind of retested a little bit with a little candle retesting, but it ain't do nothing crazy like going half of the candle. Move, move up your stop loss on the standard trade. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you could do it on the risk management one too, but definitely on the standard one. Move up your stop loss on that one and let it continue to drop. As soon as you see that that it's wicking out too deep, like the wick out is, is, is coming back too, too far, close the trade. And also, if the next, pre, the next candle is going the opposite way and it's, and it's really going past the retest, like how far do you want it to retest? That's probably the, the question. This is probably too deep for me for a standard. Let's see mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Let's say let's say we caught let me I want to use a really great example. Um okay, let's use this. So here's the trade. We took we we caught this trade from the beginning because it made sense. And we caught this on our regular lot size, risk management, $5. It's going down. We in the trade. This boy pulls back. This is a great retest. If it pulled back this deep, though, from here, and it started pulling back like that, that deep, no. You know, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like if you already in the standard, let's say you would, let's say, okay, right here. So now you took the standard on this one. You feel me? It pulled back and then you took the standard on this candle. You see how far this thing pulled back? Mm. Look at that. Let me zoom in. That boy, uh-uh, I'm, I'm out this trade. Because it basically just took your whole standard away. So, all right, guys, that's the video. I hope it was very informative. I hope it added a lot of value to your trading career. Um, again, guys, I want to help you guys become six-figure traders. Um, if you need a team to get on, get on Team Take Profits because we winning. All right? All my teams are winning. Team in Chicago, team in Detroit, team in Grand Rapids, we winning and I'm looking to grow. If you have any scalping strategies or upping your lot size and safely doing it um, and minimizing risk, you know, leave a comment below. Also, I encourage you guys to go out and try it on demo. You know what I'm saying? And then come back to this video and leave a comment. Let me know how it worked. Um, if is there something that, that that didn't work for you that I need to address and help you and answer your question You know come back and leave a comment. All right guys So don't forget to like this video comment and subscribe and let's make this money, baby. Peace